The shocking truth behind BMW's 003 turbojet engine reveals a story of crushing failure at the worst possible moment. In 1939, as the world teetered on the edge of total war, German engineers promised a revolutionary jet engine that would guarantee air supremacy. They swore the BMW 003 would propel the Luftwaffe into an unstoppable new era of aerial warfare. But behind closed doors, the engine that was supposed to change history was choking on its own ambition. While rival engineers at Junkers pushed their competing design forward, BMW's pride and joy stuttered, stalled, and failed on test stands across the Reich. What transformed Germany's most promising jet engine into the most devastating technological disappointment? The BMW 003 wasn't just another engine. It was supposed to be the mechanical messiah of the Third Reich's aviation dreams. This axial flow turbojet promised to deliver 800 kilograms of thrust through eight meticulously engineered compressor stages, each blade a testament to German precision. At its heart beat an annular combustion chamber with 16 individual flame tubes designed to burn kerosene with maximum efficiency, while its single-stage turbine was engineered to withstand temperatures exceeding 750 degrees Celsius. BMW's engineers envisioned their creation powering the next generation of German fighters, initially the Messerschmitt ME262, though it would ultimately find its home in the Hinkel HE162 Volksjäger. The 003 was lighter than its main competitor, the Junkers Jumo 004, weighing in at just 620 kilograms compared to the Jumo 720. Its smaller diameter of 690 millimeters made it more suitable for installation in slim fighter fuselages, while its design fuel consumption promised greater range and endurance. The engine represented a radical departure from BMW's traditional expertise in radial piston engines. Under the leadership of Hermann Ostrich and later Max Adolf Mueller, BMW's team incorporated innovative features like hollow turbine blades for cooling and a sophisticated fuel control system. The compressor design drew inspiration from aerodynamic research at the Deutsche Versuchsanstalt für Luftfahrt, incorporating variable stator vanes in the early stages to prevent surge conditions. But engines aren't built on theories. They're forged in fire, tested in violence, and proven in combat. And the BMW 003 was about to learn that German engineering pride couldn't overcome the brutal realities of rushed wartime development. This beast of precision machinery, this crown jewel of Bavarian innovation, carried within its gleaming turbine blades the seeds of its own catastrophic struggles. The BMW's development began in 1939 under the leadership of Hermann Ostrich, a man who believed German engineering could solve any problem through sheer determination. The initial designs looked promising on paper. BMW's engineers, transitioning from their success with radial engines like the BMW 801, approached the turbojet with characteristic confidence. They would create something revolutionary something that would make the British Whittle engine look primitive by comparison. But from the first test run in August 1940, the engine revealed its stubborn nature. Where engineers expected smooth acceleration to full power, they got violent surges and compressor stalls. The carefully machined turbine blades, subjected to higher temperatures than anticipated, showed signs of creep and distortion after just hours of operation. Test after test ended in disappointment, with engines failing to achieve their design thrust levels. The Reich Air Ministry grew increasingly concerned about the delays. BMW's engineers worked exhausting hours, pushing themselves to solve the cascade of problems. The pressure was intense. The Luftwaffe desperately needed jet engines as Allied bombing intensified. The combustion chamber design proved particularly troublesome, with flame stability issues that took months to resolve. By 1942, while the Junker Jumo 004 was achieving its first successful flights, the BMW 003 remained problematic producing only 430 kilograms of thrust instead of the promised 800 kilograms. Engineers discovered that their compressor efficiency was far below calculations, requiring significant redesigns. The project consumed resources and time that Germany could ill afford. Racing against the clock, with the war situation deteriorating, BMW's miracle engine seemed increasingly like an impossible dream. The BMW 003's combat debut came far later than planned and with mixed results. When the engine finally achieved marginally acceptable performance in October 1944, producing around 800 kilograms of thrust in its A1 variant, it found its primary application in the Hinkle HE-162 Salamander. This hasty pairing of an immature engine with a rushed fighter design created a combination that struggled to make any impact on the air war. Luftwaffe pilots who flew the HE-162 reported that the BMW 003A1 was temperamental, 
and required delicate handling. Unlike the Yumo 004, which had by then accumulated thousands of flight hours, the 003 suffered from poor throttle response and a tendency to flame out during aggressive maneuvers. The engine's operational life barely reached 50 hours between overhauls, and many units failed before reaching even this modest goal. In the scattered combat operations that took place, primarily during March and April 1945, the BMW 003-powered HE-162s achieved limited success. JG-1, the primary unit equipped with that type, reported numerous operational losses due to engine failures rather than enemy action. The engine that had promised to deliver superior performance instead forced pilots to fly conservatively, always mindful of their power plant's limitations. The few encounters with Allied aircraft highlighted the engine's inadequacies. While the HE-162's airframe was nimble and well-designed, the BMW 003 couldn't provide the reliable power needed for effective combat. Pilots found themselves unable to pursue damaged bombers or escape from pursuing fighters, knowing that demanding maximum thrust might cause immediate engine failure. The real tragedy of the BMW 003 lay not just in its technical shortcomings, but in the systematic problems that prevented its success. Post-war analysis by Allied engineers revealed fundamental flaws in the development process that doomed the engine from the start. BMW had attempted to leap directly from piston engines to advanced turbojets without the gradual learning curve that British and American manufacturers had experienced. More damaging was the discovery that BMW's development was hampered by intercompany rivalry and resource competition. While Junkers received priority access to special alloys and manufacturing equipment, BMW had to do with inferior materials. The company's turbine blades, made from less heat-resistant alloys than specified in the original design, simply couldn't withstand operational temperatures. This wasn't a design flaw, it was a consequence of wartime material shortages that BMW's management had downplayed in their reports. Internal company documents captured by American forces revealed that BMW engineers had repeatedly warned about these material compromises, but their concerns were overruled by management eager to meet production deadlines. The pressure to deliver engines for the HE-162 program led to the approval of engines that engineers knew would have shortened operational lives. This wasn't deliberate sabotage, but rather the inevitable result of impossible demands meeting physical reality. Perhaps most shocking was the human cost of this rushed development. Test pilots faced extraordinary risks flying with experimental 003 engines. Several fatal accidents during the development phase were directly attributable to engine failures that occurred within expected parameters. The engines were simply being pushed beyond what their compromised materials could handle. The climax of the BMW 003's troubled history came during the final months of the war, as Germany's situation became increasingly desperate. In January 1945, with Allied forces closing in, BMW made one last attempt to salvage their engine's reputation with the 003 C variant, featuring an afterburner that promised to boost thrust to over 1,000 kilograms. This development, occurring while bombs fell on German factories, epitomized the disconnect between ambition and reality. The first tests of the afterburner-equipped engine were disastrous. The additional heat stress caused immediate turbine failures, with blades literally melting during test runs. Yet pressure from above demanded that these engines be rushed to operational units. The few HE-62s that received these modified engines experienced catastrophic failures, often during takeoff when pilots engaged the afterburner. The true death knell for the BMW 003 came not from any dramatic demonstration, but from simple mathematics. By March 1945, BMW's Spandau factory could produce only a handful of engines per week, while the Yumo 004, despite its own problems, was rolling off production lines at 10 times that rate. The Reich Air Ministry made the inevitable decision to concentrate all resources on the Yumo engine, effectively ending the 003's operational career. As Soviet forces approached BMW's facilities in April 1945, engineers attempted to destroy documentation and prototypes to prevent their capture. However, their haste left much intact, providing the Allies with a complete picture of the 003's development. What they found was not evidence of a wonder weapon, but rather a cautionary tale of what happens when political pressure overrides engineering judgment. By war's end, BMW had produced approximately 500 003 engines, with only about half reaching operational units. The Americans and Soviets who examined captured engines found a design that, while innovative in some respects, was fundamentally compromised by material shortages and rush development. Technical analysis revealed that even with proper materials, the 003 would have struggled to match the reliability of contemporary Allied engines. 
The 003's failure had lasting consequences for BMW. The company was prohibited from aircraft engine production until the 1960s, losing decades of potential development. Many BMW engineers found employment with other manufacturers, carrying hard-learned lessons about jet engine development. Ironically, some of the 003's better features, particularly its compressor design, influenced post-war engine development in France and the Soviet Union. When BMW finally returned to aircraft engine production, they did so as a partner with established manufacturers like Rolls-Royce, explicitly acknowledging their need to relearn the field. The company's modern success in producing engines for civilian aircraft stands in stark contrast to the 003's failure. Built on a foundation of patience and methodical development that was impossible during wartime, Today, surviving BMW 003 engines can be found in museums across Europe and America. These artifacts, often displayed alongside their more successful UMO 004 rivals, serve as tangible reminders of how wartime desperation can undermine technical excellence. They stand not as monuments to German engineering prowess, but as evidence of the limitations imposed by war, poor materials, and impossible deadlines. The BMW 003 teaches us fundamental lessons about the nature of technological development in a field where physical laws cannot be negotiated and material science can't be rushed. The 003 stands as proof that no amount of determination can overcome basic engineering constraints. It reminds us that in aviation, where failure means death, there are no shortcuts to reliability. Now, perhaps the engine's greatest lesson lies in understanding the environment that created it. The BMW 003 was a product of its time born from desperation, nurtured by unrealistic expectations, and ultimately killed by the same forces that demanded its creation. It represents what happens when the need for miracles overwhelms the patience required for methodical development. When we study the BMW 003 today, we can see more than just a failed turbojet. We see a warning about the cost of rushing critical technologies, of allowing political necessity to override engineering judgment. The engine's story resonates beyond aviation history speaking to any field where pressure to deliver can compromise the integrity of the development process. True innovation requires not just brilliance and determination, but also time, resources, and the freedom to fail and learn. The BMW 003 possessed the first two qualities, but was denied the others by circumstance. That denial transformed what might have been a stepping stone in jet engine development into a cautionary tale that still instructs engineers today about the importance of doing things right rather than doing them quickly. If you found the BMW 003 story as revealing as we did, drop a like and subscribe for more. What engine should we explore next? Let us know in the comments below and remember, in aviation history, every failure teaches us something vital about the price of progress.